So, before we uh, proceed with the uh, worked example, uh, let me just uh, illustrate an uh, alternative method for using the, uh, uh, the uh, air table and that um, uh, looks like this. So, we uh, mentioned that for an isotropic process, we can calculate the uh, reduced pressure use, uh, using the actual pressure ratio. So, by using the fact that P r 2 s over P r 1 equal to P 2 over P 1, we computed the value for uh, P r 2 s and then with this value for P r 2 s, we went into the table uh, to retrieve the value for H 2 s. This can be done in a slightly different manner without uh, using the reduced pressure itself as follows. Okay. So, for any process, for example, uh, for a process 1 to 2 s, <coughs> I can write the entropy at state 2 s as S0 at T2 s minus R natural log P2 s over P ref from the uh, definition of specific entropy itself. And <coughs> this is equal to S1 because we are saying 1 to 2 s is an isentropic process. Therefore, I can write S0 of T2S is equal to S2S plus R natural log P2S over P ref. Okay. S2S is equal to S1. So, the value is known. We uh, looked up the value from the table that is 1.70203. So, we can actually evaluate S0 of T2S using this uh, expression. So, with this value for S0, we can now go to the table and retrieve uh, the um, enthalpy value that uh, that we are looking for. Let us see uh, uh, how that is done. So, S0 S of T2S is 2 0.36287. So, if I go to this table 2 0 uh, 36287 would fall uh, right here. Right. So, that is the value that we are uh, looking for 2.36287. I am sorry, 2.36287 would actually fall here, I am sorry, 2.36287 will fall here and uh, the previous procedure where we used <coughs> PR2S, PR2S was 13.86. Uh, so, let us see where that comes, 13.86, uh, notice that this also falls in the same, uh, in the same between the same two entries in the table. So, both the procedures will give you identical values. So, depending upon which one you prefer, you can either use uh, S0 uh, of uh, T2S to look up enthalpy or calculate reduced pressure and then do it that way. Both are okay. Okay, now let us uh, go to the worked example. So, we have an ideal Brayton cycle, uh, which means isentropic efficiency of the components is 100 percent. It operates with the pressure ratio of 30, <coughs> peak temperature 1300 Kelvin. So, air, ent air is the working substance, it enters the compressor at 100 kPa 300 Kelvin and we are asked to calculate heat supplied, power output, thermal efficiency and the second law efficiency and calculate the rate of exergy destruction in the components. Ambient temperature is given to be 300 Kelvin. Okay. So, we proceed um, in a methodical manner. So, what we do is the following. Okay. So, we start with state 1, uh, look up the values that are required for state 1 and then walk through the cycle. <coughs> okay. So, here we have listed the uh, properties at uh, each state. The uh, quantity that is shown in italics is the quantity that is used to uh, enter the table and the quantities that are retrieved from the table are shown in bold. So, the quantity used to enter the table is shown in italics and the quantities that are retrieved from the table are shown in bold. Okay. So, let us see uh, how this proceeds. State 1, um, temperature is given to be 300 Kelvin. So, we uh, go to the table corresponding to 300 Kelvin. So, corresponding to 300 Kelvin. We uh, retrieve the uh, specific enthalpy 
S0 at 300 Kelvin and PR. <coughs> so, these three values are retrieved and uh, S itself the uh, specific entropy at, the, at this state is evaluated using the familiar expression S of t comma p equal to S0 of t minus R natural log p over p ref. Because p it is uh, at this state the pressure is the same as the reference pressure S comes out to be just equal to S0 at that temperature. Now, we move on to state 2s and the pressure ratio is given to be 30. So, that means the, uh, uh, the pressure at state 2s is 3000 kilopascals. And since uh, P2 over uh, P2s over P1 is equal to, so remember uh, 1 2s is an isentropic process. So, P2s over P1 is equal to PR2s over PR1. So, that means I can evaluate PR2s to be 41.58. So, we uh, go to the table with this value 41.58 for PR. Forty one point five eight would fall between these two entries. So, we interpolate for H and we interpolate for S0 from these two entries. Okay, so let us see. I am sorry, S0 is actually uh, not required for this case because it is an isentropic process, we know the value of uh, S itself. So, the H falls between these two entries here. So, let us uh, go here. So, we look up the value for H like this and since uh, S to S is equal to S1, entropy value is known. Now, we move on to state 3. Uh, remember 2s to 3 is an isobaric process. So, the pressure is uh, known and the temperature is given to be 1300 Kelvin. So, we use this value to uh, uh, enter the table and retrieve quantities from there. So, 1300 Kelvin So, we pick up uh, the value for H from here and S0 from here and PR from here. So, H3, so this is H3, uh, this is S0 at uh, 3, I am sorry, S0 at state 3 and this is PR at state 3. So, H3, S0 at state 3 and PR at state 3 are all known and we can evaluate S yes, at uh, state 3 using this formula. S0 is known, uh, pressure P is uh, 3000 kilopascal, P ref is of course 100 kilopascal. So, we can evaluate S at state 3 using this expression. Now, we move on to uh, state 4S, 3 to 4S is an isentropic process. So, that means S4S is equal to S3 that is known and PR 4S over PR3 is equal to P3 over P1, I am sorry P3, I am sorry P4 over P4 over P3. So, that means I can uh, evaluate uh, PR4S to be 11.03. So, this is the value which we use to enter the table PR equal to 11.03. So, let us see. So, this is where it falls. So, we can retrieve uh, H at uh, state 4 S. S uh, 0 is not required because S is already known. So, we retrieve the value for H at state 4 S from the table. So, that is given like this. So, now we have all the properties that we want for completing the calculations. So, at each for each state you need to identify uh, the value that is going to be used to enter the table retrieve the values that are required and then proceed to the next state and then just walk through the cycle that is the procedure. So, once again um, like with the other worked examples my suggestion would be for you to pause the uh, lecture at this point 
work out the problem yourself and then come back and compare the values with what is uh, what is shown here it would um, it would be much more beneficial to you than just going through this uh, examples just by listening to the lecture you should actually work out the problem on your own so application of steady flow energy equation to the compressor gives us this uh, again steady flow energy equation to the turbine on a per unit mass basis mass flow rate basis gives us this uh, rate at which heat is added, rate at which heat is rejected and the first law efficiency is 59.8 uh, percent for the basic cycle. Now, let us calculate uh, the um, rate at which exergy is supplied. Remember in this uh, cycle, so exergy is supplied here to the compressor and exergy is supplied here in the form of heat to the combustor and and exergy is recovered here. Notice that there is no exergy recovery associated with this because this is rejecting heat to the ambient. So, there is no exergy uh, recovery corresponding to q c dot unlike what we saw in the Rankine cycle where the condenser was operating at a temperature of 45 degrees Celsius not the ambient temperature. Here heat is being rejected to the ambient. So, there is no uh, exergy recovery uh, at this state all right. So, let us go back and uh, uh, do the calculations. So, exergy supplied uh, compressor plus q h dot we get 955.73 exergy recovered as I mentioned is only from the turbine. So, that gives me 851.62. So, the second law efficiency comes out to be 89.1 percent which is pretty high. rate of exergy destruction during the heat addition process may be evaluated using this expression and it comes out to be 38.49 and rate of exergy destruction during heat rejection process may be evaluated using this expression and it comes out to be higher than the rate of exergy destruction during the heat addition process. So, this is actually 65. So, the scope for improvement it would seem in the case of the Brayton cycle is actually on the uh, condenser side and not on the um, uh, not on the combustor side in contrast to the Rankine cycle where the scope for uh, improvement was on the boiler side rather than on the condenser side. In fact, practically no change was made on the condenser side at all in the case of the Rankine cycle. So, this one this is the reason why we compute these uh, values particularly exergy uh, the concept of exergy is very useful because it alone can offer insights like this, which is not something that we would have expected when we started out. Now, the first improvement that we will uh, try to do uh, to this cycle is, uh, uh, is try to reduce the uh, compressor work. You may recall uh, uh, that earlier we uh, we actually discussed this work interaction of internally reversible steady flow processes, and we said that the uh, work that is required for an isothermal process, which is uh, this one, is less than the work that is required for an uh, isentropic process. So we have assumed the compression work to be isentropic. Right. So, uh, it is uh, there is scope for improvement here number 1. Number 2, we also uh, mentioned earlier that the uh, work power that is produced in the case of an isothermal process is uh, more than the power that is produced in the case of a uh, isentropic process. So, this is S equal to constant. So, you get more expansion uh, expansion work in the case of a reversible isothermal process than uh, an isentropic process. So, this is something that we will keep in mind, but for now let us focus on the compression process. So, this is the compression process and this is the expansion process. So, what we are about to discuss is applicable equally to expansion process as well. So, the idea here uh, is to do the following. 
Now, the reversible isothermal compression process is actually not practicable because it requires excessive cooling ok and that is not very easy to uh, implement ok. However, we can uh, try to do uh, or construct a process which uh, sort of mimics a reversible isothermal process in spirit ok. Let us see how we do that. So, basically what we do is we start then we uh, compress along the uh, along uh, the s equal to constant or isentropic uh, isentrope and then we cool the uh, gas like this. So, we cool it to the same temperature as state 1. Notice that this isotherm runs from state 1 to state 2. So, they are all at the same temperature. So, if I take air in at a temperature of 300 Kelvin, after this compression process, I cool it to 300. Then I run it along another isentropic process like this and then we cool it again to 300 Kelvin and then I again compress along another isentropic process like this and then cool it again to uh, 300 Kelvin and uh, and then again compress along an isentropic process and then finally reach state 2. Notice that the cooling here in this case is not as excessive as it would have been had we carried out the entire process as a reversible isothermal process. Here we are only uh, compressing partially and then cooling it to the initial temperature which is much more practicable from an engineering perspective. Okay. The more number of steps we have here, the more uh, I mean the easier the cooling process is. Okay. But again, it is also impractical to have too many steps. In fact, if you have infinite number of steps, obviously we approach the uh, reversible isothermal process. So, you cannot have too many steps, but at the same time, we do not want to have too few steps so which would actually increase the cooling requirements. Okay, that is the general idea and we do the same thing here also. So, in the case of an expansion process, we go like this. So, here at each horizontal leg heat is removed. So, this is a cooling process whereas, each horizontal leg here is a heating process. We add heat to reach the same temperature as state 1. Okay. So, we will come back to the expansion process later on, but for now we see how this is done. Now, this uh, sort of compression process is known as uh, compression with intercooling. So, this is compression with intercooling ok and uh, let us see. The um, uh, ok, let us uh, go back and then uh, look at a simple situation. So, let us summarize what we have said so far. So, for a given pressure ratio, steady flow reversible isothermal compression process requires less power than an isentropic compression process. So, if the work required in compression is less, our expectation is that the efficiency of the Brayton cycle can be improved because the work that is required is uh, less. We will see whether it comes out, whether it turns out to be the case or not, ok. But as I already mentioned, a reversible isothermal process is very difficult to execute in real life because of the excessive cooling requirement. So, what we uh, try to do, what is more practicable is to achieve the compression in multiple stages with the air being cooled to its uh, initial temperature at the end of each stage, ok. But the compression process across across each stage as we showed before is still isentropic, ok. So, here we have illustrated uh, two different versions of a um, uh, of a single stage, two stage compression process with single stage intercooling, ok. So, the air is compressed from here to here and then intercooled cooled and then taken all the way there. Here the air is compressed from here to here, uh, cooled and then compressed uh, up to this level. Okay, So, it is two stage compression with uh, intercooling in between the stages. Now, um, so you can see that both these are two stage compression processes. So, the question is what should be the intermediate pressure? So, this is the intermediate pressure. So, what should the intermediate pressure be in order for the work to be uh, or the power consumed the, for the process to be as small as possible or the least possible. 
Okay, so you can see that uh, the area shown here, the gray area, is the savings in work. Okay, so this is I am sorry, savings in is the savings in power. So in one case, you can see that this area is long and skinny, whereas in the other case, you can see that it is actually uh, more like a rectangle, short and fat. Okay, so, as this uh, uh, pressure, intermediate pressure at which we are cooling the gas, as it is uh, changed, the power saving also changes. The shape of the area that we have shown in gray also changes. So, there is an optimum uh, pressure in between at which we expect the power savings to be a maximum. Okay. How do we determine this? So, we apply SFE to the overall compression process. So, the first stage compression process, we go from 1 to x and in the second uh, stage compression process, we go from y to f where f is the final temperature. Depending upon where the intermediate pressure is, the final temperature of course, will be different, but the pressure ratio is the same, P2 over P1 is the same. Okay. Now, also notice that uh, T y is the temperature at state y and uh, y state y and state 1 both lie on the same isobar. So, uh, I am sorry, isotherm. So, state y and state 1 both lie on the same isotherm. So, T y is equal to T 1 and states x and y lie on the same isobar. So, P y equal to P x okay. and T y equal to T 1. Notice that here we have assumed uh, the air to be calorically perfect uh, for the sake of simplicity. Remember, we are just trying to get an idea of what this optimal value uh, of what the optimal value for the intermediate pressure is. So, without any loss of generality and with minimal loss of accuracy, we can actually uh, and for the sake of simplicity, we may assume the uh, gas to be or air to be calorically perfect. So, this is the first stage compression. This is the second stage compression. Now, 1x and yf for isentropic processes. What is that? 1x and yf, I am sorry, uh, y to the final state, wherever it may be. In this case, it is uh, 2 prime, in this case, it is 2 double prime. So, wherever the final state is, 1x and yf are both isentropic processes. So, which means I can uh, replace this ratio Tx over T1 using the familiar isentropic uh, relation PV raised to gamma equal to constant. So, we get an expression like this. Again, remember Px equal to Py. So, we differentiate uh, w, this expression for Wx dot compressor compression with respect to Px and set the derivative equal to 0. And quite surprisingly, uh, it turns out that Px equal to Py equal to P1, P2 to the power 1 half. In other words, the optimal intermediate pressure is such that the pressure ratio in each stage of compression is the same. So, this means that the pressure ratio in the uh, first stage of compression Px over P1 and the pressure ratio in the second stage of compression P2 over Py are both equal. And not only that, it is also equal to square root of the pressure ratio across the entire cycle. So, this is nothing but P2 over P1. The additional fact uh, that happens in this is since the uh, temperature once we have an optimum, once the pressure ratio is the same in each stage. Since the temperature at the beginning of each stage of compression is always the same. So, we start at state 1, we go up to the intermediate pressure, we then cool the air to the same temperature as state 1, then we continue the compression. So, the power required in each stage is also the same. So, our calculations actually become somewhat simpler uh, if you employ uh, the, uh, uh, the intercooling or multiple st multi stage compression with intercooling. Now, in case uh, we carry out the compression in n stages instead of 2 stage, the pressure ratio across each stage simply becomes equal to Rp raised to 1 over n, the nth root of Rp. If it is 2 stages, then it is the second root of Rp. If it is uh, n stages, then it is the nth root of Rp. 
So, the same consideration uh, applies to an exp uh, isentropic expansion process also. So, the intermediate pressure again uh, during the expansion should be the square root if it is a two stage uh, process should be the square root of the overall pressure ratio. And we will make use of this fact when we do reheat uh, in when we add reheat to the Brayton cycle.